Uh, we are now, we've now moved to a separate part of town. Uh, this is another area of terrace houses, old fashioned terrace houses. So you can see they're all con connected together and they all have these little roofs over the top. This is because, because this is snow country. And the idea is so you can walk, you can walk under here in the snow and uh, don't have to worry about getting snowed on. Um, interesting thing about this part of Japan is the owner of the house actually owns the footpath. You own this, I own this, right, right up to here. So, even, but this is public space. So I am, I am owning space which, uh, which, is, which I'm allowing the public to use. So this is my responsibility, right up to here. Um, if somebody slips, well, it's their problem. <laughs> but a personal the, the, the area of personal responsibility is greater than in other cities and other parts of the world. You own, you own the, the footpath. I bought this as, uh, as a storeroom in a garage. Two-story, very large, uh, about $2,500. Now, if you think that's cheap, I think I pay too much for that. I could probably have... 2,500. I could have got it for 2,000 if I asked. But too, too bad, I've already got it. Anyway, I needed the space anyway, because as you know, I'm the man with too many hobbies. And men with hobbies need lots of space. So let's have a look inside here. I'll show you my, my other hobby. Anyway, come in. Now here's my other little project, which I've been working on for years and years and years. I just never get around to fixing it properly. Uh, what this is, it's a, it's a trailer, or, or as they call it, say in British English, a caravan. We don't actually call them trailers. This is a caravan uh, from about 1958. And it's a very, very nice one. Uh, vintage, vintage caravans are becoming very popular worldwide now. There's a boom of vintage caravans. They're expensive, they're hard to find. Um, there's even a whole site dedicated to them now on the internet called, uh, I think it's vintagetrailers.com or something, um, about a man who, who knows everything about these and how to fix them. Um, but this one, because it's an English, no, this one is from New Zealand, a New Zealand built caravan. So this particular model, I have never seen or heard of another one like this. So it's possibly the only one in the world. So it is a very rare and unusual model. Um, I liked it instantly. As soon as I saw it, I liked it. Oh, by the way, I found it on, on a cycling trip. It was, I was on a cycling trip and I was feeling tired and I took a rest in a field and it was full of grass, long grass, and I was going through the long grasses up to here and suddenly there was a little clearing and this was in it. In the middle of nowhere, it was in New Zealand, it was covered in moss. I had a roof over it, which was good but it was covered in moss um, and mold on the outside. I thought, what a treasure, what a fantastic thing. Um, so I found the owner, um, asked him if he wanted to sell it. Yes, so I bought it for $800. Uh, 800, back, back. Oh, it was probably 19, no, it was, it was over 2000, about 2005. And when I was living in New Zealand. One of the best things I ever found while cycling. So. Bought it for eight hundred dollars, which is about five hundred US dollars. Um, now today, th this thing would be worth I don't know twenty thousand dollars, maybe thirty thousand dollars, and I got it for eight hundred. Um, but have a look. I want, well, first of all, the, the the interesting about this trailer is the um, streamlined shape. It's it's most trailers are just flat at the at the front. This is pointed, so it's like a boat. It's like a boat here. In fact, I think maybe boat builders built this. Let's have a look. Going along the side here, this wonderful streamlined back. You have to come. Now, there's no windows at the back at all. And it even has this nice embossed piece in here. That's wonderful. Wonderful artistic design. I've never seen a trailer like it. Never heard of a trailer like it. So I've, I've actually, this is almost half restored now. I've spent many years fixing it up. I've taken all the paint off it. I'm fixing the window. It was painted. It was painted a terrible color. 
I'm fixing the windows. All the windows have to be fixed. I've fixed this window. And just as an experiment, I've actually put plastic in here, but it has these tiny little louvers inside the plastic. Um, these were all broken, all, everything was falling down. Um, they had to be completely taken to bits and fixed and put back together again. I'm probably going to do all the windows with this plastic stuff because it's uh, much, much lighter. And for a caravan, you want to have it light, especially at the top. It's okay to have it heavy down the bottom, but you want it light at the top for stability. Uh, the lighter, the better. So the, those very, very heavy windows I'm replacing with this stuff, which is um, insulated glass uh, plastic with louvers on the inside. So it's, um, it's much more, much better insulation than just glass. You can see that it's hollow in there. And it has these little louver things, mm -hmm. louver things. Um, it also means you can eliminate curtains. If, these things always came with curtains in the 1950s. I don't like curtains in a house, especially something this small. Uh, it makes the room look smaller, they get dirty, and they can always catch on fire. So I will eliminate the curtains. Well, let's have a look inside. Now, this is under a state of repair. The wood here did rot. It had, le had leaks in here. So this is all, this, this part here is all rotten. I have to replace that. Um, I've just got this extra support here at the moment just to give it some extra rigidity. Um, from there back, it's okay. It was only this front bit which rotted. But I want to replace all the wood anyway with uh, much better wood than this plywood. I would have nice wooden panels in here. Uh, you can tell this is an English style caravan because the electrics are all English style, which means the switch, which means up is off, down is on. And actually it's written there, even though this is a general electric company, down is on, up is off. In America, it's the other way around. And when I first went to America, I, I suddenly got a shock to find that all the, all the light switches were upside down. That's off, that's off. That's on, that's on. Uh, New Zealand switches at this time were, had an earth, earth wire in them as well. So that's on. Uh, 1950s design, it's all, this is formica, this is all wood, but look, when you look at these cool, these cool, cool cabinet switches, look at that, you put, it's a button, you put your finger in like that. That opens like that, that opens like that. Very, very cool indeed, look at that, this, this cool button. It works the catch like that and sits nice and flat. What's the book? The book looks like 1970s caravan, uh, camping book from the 1970s. The, this caravan was probably used up until the 1970s. Um, that looks very 1970s to me. Coffee, tea and sugar. Uh, this time in New Zealand, people didn't really drink proper coffee. The instant coffee was about the only coffee you could get at this time in New Zealand. Um, what's interesting is these lights here. Now, when I was a boy in New Zealand in the, in the 1960s um, and 1970s, all public buses and trains had this kind of light. It had the exact same interior light. So it, it, this is a, like a 12 volt light. So at this time in New Zealand, there was only one kind of light you could get. And buses used them, trains used them, and this caravan used them. So it was the same I mean, one type of light. This time in, in New Zealand, everything was uh, very hard to get. Must, be, must have been like Russia. Soviet Union. Yeah, Soviet Union. You, you couldn't buy anything. And, well, you had to make it or you had to know somebody who had it um, and buy it off, off, off somebody you knew or buy it second hand um, or build it yourself. But this is actually quite good because it made New Zealanders very um, enterprising. enterprising and, um, and uh, there's a high level of ingenuity in those days. Most men could fix anything. Um, and they'd build everything. Oh, there's one little the brand of this caravan I have discovered. Read this again. J. Burnett and Sons Limited, 346 Gladstone Road, 
Gisborne. Okay. Yeah, I have to look that up on the internet. Maybe, maybe there is another caravan like this somewhere. <laughs> 